So hello, welcome to the OER Minute. I'm Dr. Clarissa Westwhite. I'm serving as a PI for the Tennessee State um, HBCU Affordable Solutions Grant. Figured I need to put that in one of these recordings. <laughs> um, I'm gonna hide the controls and then I'll get started. So the first of four OERs that I will share today um, is Project Cora, and Cora is a community of online research assignments, and it is what it says it is. It's pretty straightforward. So they provide open access resource for faculty and librarians um, to pre-established um, research assignments, so that you don't have to spend a lot of time because we do we do know that assignment creation and formation can take so much planning and um, so much time out of teaching just to create the assignment. Um, so this way you're able to kind of focus on the goals and the objectives of what you want students to be able to do at the completion of the assignment than the formation and creation of the assignment. And here all you have to do, of course, is just kind of tweak it to fit your particular need um, so that it matches. So if you want to, you can just start here with latest assignments. We see critical reading lesson plan, um, lower division sociology, critical reading pre-source, um, some more by the source. Then they have algorithms and attention economy. Um, so if none of that what's, what's your appetite, you can just click on assignments. And here you can see the assignments um, for yourself, you can search by information literacy concepts. So this is why it's um, um, also created with librarians in mind, so that if we're looking for a particular framework or a particular um, information literacy concept or um, item, we can just kind of come here or any discipline. So we can see accounting, anthropology, archeology, span classics, biology, business, dance, economics, education, environmental studies, ethics, um, geology, film, history, health. So I'm gonna click health because I usually start with religion. So today I just kind of maybe focus on health. Um, here, ability level, so it's faculty, high school, undergraduate or graduate, master's or doctoral, and individual or group. So is this an individual assignment per person kind of assignment, or is this a group uh, research assignment or activity? So if I want the ability to be graduate and I want it to be individual and in health, you know, hopefully we find something. And here we see um, something, not sure, and not in English. Um, <laughs> here's one that looks at Zotero. If you are teaching students about Zotero, um, here's another, um, here's emphatic. design and occupational therapy, sorry, et cetera. Um, so here gives you a summary it's from Northern Arizona University, insight into her development of an avatar-based method for promoting empathy in classrooms and for allowing their use in other learning spaces, including clinical settings. So if that sounds interesting, you would click on read more. And you get the learning objectives. It could be individual or health. Here's a level. Suggested citation. And here's a short description. And here's the relevant link. So I can link this, click on this link. And here is the lesson design. So I can present, you know, so you can edit um, and then you can go ahead and present. 
this gaps. So it gives you, and then there are examples of an infographic. Here are some communities, design tools. So the object of this lesson is um, for students to learn about emphatic, empath empathic, uh -uh. emphatic, empathic, sorry, because I'm just doing something with this word, design and how they can leverage empathic design thinking to promote health information literacy. The assignment is designed for occupational therapy students, but is accessible, is applicable across allied health programs as well as health policy and consumer for uh, the back half of the lesson, students work in groups to apply design thinking for clients and patients. Blah, blah, blah. They will then return to class to learn how to create literacy driven deliverables for those players. So they are creating an infographic um, for a particular population within um, healthcare. So, you know, it provides the slideshow for you that you can edit. And you can adapt the assignment. You just need to create an um, account, but you can adapt it. And then um, add new comment if you had anything you want to say about it. But anyway, so you can kind of see how you can go through and find um, assignments that you can use in your course. Here's some blogs, some, and actually, it won the Merlot ICT Literacy Classics Award. And then they have a teaching toolkit. They say, I say, oh, I've read this. Um, yes, yeah, a, a writing um, handbook. 50 Ways to Leave Your Lectern. So this provides some professional development, um, some suggestions. Yeah, so the teaching toolkit seems interesting as well. So you can look per discipline. So again, if we go to health, um, you can look at the resource type, where there's an assessment, a citation tool, classroom activity, an info lit tutorial, a syllabus, a tip, pedagogy, learning theory, or a subject or research guide. You know, if it's an assessment for health, we can click search. Um, and there weren't any. So let's see if there's a classroom activity. We did see one. So here are some classroom activities. Um, research guide, maybe you're looking for a syllabus. So here are a couple um, places to look. And that is, uh, unfortunately, I've been getting that quite a bit today with some of the links. Um, and so I don't know if it's our firewall that we have that's preventing access to some of these places or if these are just broken links that someone needs to make them aware of. But that's Cora. Um, so I think it's pretty straightforward. Um, so it's, again, it's a place for you to find assignments, research assignments based on your discipline. So it's something that you don't have to start from scratch. The next one is Academic Earth. And it um, tells you here that they built the first collection of free online college courses from the world's top universities. So here you can look down and see some of their featured online programs. And you can find online courses. So this is similar to Coursera. So if you want to learn how to do something, you can come here. I know a lot of people go to YouTube, but if you wanted something more um, professionally driven, you know, um, vetted, you may want to come here. It's probably the equivalent of like TED Talk for courses. So you can look by subject. Um, they don't, so we can click view all subjects. 
so that we see it's not too bad. They also have courses for test prep, um, which may be helpful for students like the LSAT, the GMAT, the MCAT. Then we have the breakdown of the sciences, the medicine and healthcare. So like disease and epidemiology, if I click there, these are free online lectures and courses. And so you can probably figure out how you can use them in your course. Um, they also provide um, journals are here, trade magazines, because uh, some students, like we have that feature in the library. So if I go to the library, You know what, let me make sure this is recording. Yes, I was about to cry. Like, so if I come to the library, we do have the journal search here, the journals here, and then we have within the search databases, we have A to Z, or a cat journal finder. Um, but students generally don't know the name of journals to look for. <laughs> Uh, just like they don't know the name of databases to look for, right? So this site may be a place to show them, you know, even if you link to it so that they, they know that within the disease and epi epidemiology that these are titles of journals and trade magazines. Um, but they can access that here and then they can get more information about grants and scholarships, especially scholarships, $10,000 here, it varies here. Um, grants may be helpful for departments. So maybe a place that you go to or start to go to to get that kind of information and also about internships. Um, and then student professional organizations. So like it had healthcare, let me see if I can migrate back, um, had healthcare administration There are 24 courses. So, you know, one way to use this, of course, is to, um, you can embed part of this course into your course, especially if it includes um, slides and presentations. Uh, so this is corporate finance for healthcare administrators. Again, it's 24 courses, so you can kind of work through them. Global health, family planning, comparative health policy, Changing the face of American healthcare, but I'm going to click on this one. And so you get to see these are the um, recordings. This one is 34 minutes. This is an hour. This is 43 minutes. And here he's talking about lease financing, divided policy, capital structure, debt. Um, and so you could take one of these lessons and embed it into your course. If we view the course here, which is a little different, so it takes us to the course, and it actually takes us back to um, the MIT Open Course Where, which was one of the previous sites um, I've highlighted. So they kind of all do the same thing that you're doing. You're going to build maybe your own textbook, or you're going to build your course site and it would you know students would click on multiple links to access different parts of these sites for your you know according to your course outline um, so they're doing the same thing too and so here is this course there are exams there's the syllabus course description some of these are um, more complete than others there's midterm and finals there are lecture notes with the PDF attached, and you can download it all at once. And so that's, um, here's terrorism response. So you get the idea. But since this was healthcare, you know, just to show that, you know, the journals and trade magazines, um, grants and scholarships, you know, $5,000 for graduate students, graduate students, you know, this would be helpful for your students to know about because so many, you know, you know, often many of these scholarships go un, um, unawarded because they don't have anyone to apply for them. And then scholarships, 
you know, Yale, UNC, Methodist Hospital gives deadline or it varies, but it's a link so they can care, you know, follow the link or you can even show them this, you know, in class. And then you have the student organizations and the professional organizations related to healthcare. In addition to the 24 courses that you can um, go in and see if there are things you can pull out to embed or um, accentuate your courses. So this is the academic earth. And the just the, so the courses are from, you know, they want to make sure you understand the quality of these courses. They are from um, Berkeley School of Music, Columbia, Cornell, Dartmouth, Harvard, MIT, NYU, Princeton, Stanford, George Washington, University of Chicago, Yale, Wesleyan, University of Oxford, Notre Dame, Michigan, Houston, um, California of San Diego, LA, Irvine, Berkeley. So you get the idea. Um, they have playlists, they have video, videos as well. Wonderful. Um, and they can get, you know, online degrees. Isn't that amazing? Um, and the playlists are, you know, curated by Academic Earth. So like first day of freshman year, there's a playlist that they've already put together of things, intro to biology, intro to psychology, introduction to computer programming. And so you may see how that can be something that you can do on your Merlot page, just create your own playlist. Because basically they just put um, everything together under that one link. So they have videos. Um, you can do that with a page in Merlot where you just have the videos there. And that's your kind of curated playlist for students. The third place of our four um, this one is the Community College Consortium for OER. And you can tell from, you know, the first page, there's pieces that we probably, excuse me, may have seen elsewhere, or maybe not. This one is Open Connecticut. It was developed to support the adoption and creation of OER and the implementation of open practices throughout the Connecticut State Colleges and Universities system of 17 campus. So they just have a number of them that they feature, and, um, some articles, um, case studies, equity and openness, student store stories. Um, here's a panel of faculty and OER practitioners, OER funding, webinars, open for anti-racism. Um, and here's some of the their, their news, you know, things that they've received. And so you can go to, uh, we don't, we know about that. We know about, we don't wanna learn, but you can see what you need to. They offer degrees, um, different pedagogy, there's some planning, professional development, if you're interested. And then there's the, um, the projects that they're working on. So we're going to click on hmm, one of these. There's a conference if you need to attend an open OER conference. Um, but if we could just go to the first one. Hmm. So this one, um, the team, and this may be more suited uh, if you are trying to think about OER from a policy standpoint and you want to show the rest of the faculty in your area how they could use um, OER in their courses then, you know, this site, I think, is probably um, helpful in that aspect. Here, uh, we can go check out this particular OER program. 
but we've already looked at OpenStax. Not to say that you know you wouldn't find it necessary to continue to look, but um, here's another one: Go Open CT, where educators upload and share OER they are using. So under that one link, you have other um, OER repositories to check out. And so, you know, some of these sites organize the OERs a little better for you to find it, and some you have to kind of click and play. So here, you know, we've been here before because I can see my um, <laughs> my search terms are here still. Well, let me type in health. Um, let me not do that. Let me come here to maybe applied science, graduate, and we'll just say standard. Yeah, we have been to this before. It was just under another um, link. And so you'll find that a lot of the OERs are inter links within each other like some of them just kind of cycle you through some of the same places you've been like OpenStax is um, used to fuel a lot of other OER so you'll go to their site it's a new it's a new name with a new link but when you get there you're finding you're still searching OpenStax um, plus maybe some other things that they've kind of thrown in the mix um, and so since we've already looked at this one I'm just gonna go back and see what else we've been to OpenStack. This is their blog and then OpenCSCU. Um, this is a resource to support the adoption and creation of and the implementation of open practices throughout their system. So again, if you're looking for information to encourage people to teach them about OER, to find strategies to finding OER, um, that's kind of what this, um, how to create them um, helps you with that. So I'm gonna go back. Um, all right, and I think that is about what you will find here. I'm not trying to get involved. There's a conference. Okay. I'm thinking we have. This is an award. I'm just making sure really quickly. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And the last one is the Digital Public Library of America. And this is where you can search through 45 million <laughs> images, text, videos, and sounds from across the United States. Um, they have primary source sets, sets they have exhibitions. Um, and you can look at browse by partner or by topic. Um, the, I'm, I serve on the committee with the Sunshine Digital Network and we curate um, in the newsletter something each month from DPLA. It's one of the partners for the Sunshine Digital Network for Florida. Um, and so you'll find that even if you have, um, let's say you're your family's historian and you have collected photos, um, a bunch of metadata, and, and you have, and you can include the metadata, um, the data about those images um, and records, you can create a, um, you can sign a, you know, uh, go into a corporation. Mm, that's not right, but uh, um, it's kind of a contract, but not. But you can enter agreement and you can share your items with them. So across Florida, they're encouraging um, hidden um, um, 
archives, people who have, you know, boxes of records from maybe the Black Girl Scout troop in their closet and they don't know what to do with it, but they're encouraging people to get those items digitized and share it with them. And so if you share them with, for example, the Sunshine Digital Network, you are in essence sharing them with um, this particular um, repository as well. So that may be something to think about, you know, um, it's just really interesting what people have in their closets. Uh, and we, you know, wouldn't want someone to kind of come in and not know what they were and just kind of throw it away because that's how a lot of history is being erased and overlooked. So, you know, if you have family members um, who may have something, you know, have them check this out and see if they're interested in contributing. Some of the primary sources have already been put together for you. So if you're teaching and you students need to understand something about um, the Black Power Movement, um, the Harlem Renaissance, they have something in here on, um, oh, I can't remember what it was, but it's, 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 a, it's a Florida historical event. It'll come to me later. Um, and so you can pull and piece items from different um, parts of history, the Great Migration, um, Frank Lord Wright. I mean, yeah, you get the idea. So you can look at online exhibitions so that you can show students you know, what it's like to attend an exhibit, even if they've never been to a museum, or you can have them watch, um, attend an online exhibit before you actually take them to an in-person exhibit so that they kind of just know what to expect. You can click here to browse all exhibits. If you're looking for images or videos or sounds to um, assist your lesson plans, or to engage students a little more in a particular topic or discussion, you should be able to find something here out of 45 million um, images, text, and videos. And um, you can just type in your first couple of words. You know, if you're interested in Florida history, you know, you can just type in Florida and see what you find. And here is something from the National Archives of College Park. Um, this is something from the war, de war department. There are maps, photos. Um, and it goes on for a while because it says 273,000. And these are ones with um, unspecified right status. So you can use them generally in your class as long as you're not trying to, you know, take ownership or profit for them, you can use them for um, educational purposes. This one, these have unlimited reuse. Um, these permission are fair use. Fair use is what you would, you know, be um, arguing for that you're using them for fair use for educational purposes only. Um, some may say, in order for you to show the picture, use the picture, you have to get permission. Um, and here's some reuse with no modification, meaning that you can reuse it, put it on t-shirts, do whatever, but you can't modify it. And then here are some with conditions. And so that's kind of how these, these are just the rights um, status to, to be aware of when you're using them. And so here you can break it down by images or text, um, moving images, uh, film, video, um, sound or physical objects. So you can click physical object and you can see there's the what, lapel pin, uh, oyster, clamshells, foliage, um, papers, all-star wrestling, Seminole woman doll. You get the, again, you kind of get the gist. Um, and again, you know, maybe you're just looking for a couple of pictures to add to a lesson about history or about something, you know, or even someone, um, and you don't want to use the same photos that are out there on Wikipedia or that generally pop up on the websites um, um, or Google or whatever you use, you can come here to find some, you know, really good stuff. And again, I just did Florida because that's where I am, but you may want to search for something else. You can search for people to see. If they have anything here. Um, and of course, 
I'm going to have to go ahead and type in her whole name. <laughs> it says the mother Zoras. Uh, so here there's 53, 66 items. So you get the photo of her. Hmm. So you get correspondence, dance performance, you get a letter from Du Bois to Hurston, a couple, a letter from Hurston to Du Bois, Du Bois, uh, oral history interview with Gorilla Girls. Interesting. Anyway, so you get you can get lost here, of course. Um, so if you again, if you're looking for primary source sets, just to even talk to students about what a primary source is, even if it's not necessarily related to your um, lesson, but graduate students are probably not. They may need a, a refresher in primary source versus secondary source. Um, and this may be a way to teach that, you know, with some um, colorful history and a collection to kind of just show them what that really does look like. All right. Thank you again for listening and um, I look forward to doing this again next week.